The Thorpe Park Resort is one of the most popular and thrilling theme parks in the UK. It also has a rich history and many interesting facts and stories, some of which are not common knowledge. In this video I will be explaining the Thorpe Park Iceberg. This iceberg is inspired by one I came across on Reddit, created by Reddit user BigBritishM, but I have added and moved around some parts. At the tip of the iceberg, I have included the more well-known facts about the resort, and as we delve deeper, the facts and theories become more and more obscure. The island now known as Thorpe Park was once home to the Thorpe Park estate, until it was demolished in the 1930s. In the 1970s, the land was purchased and was partially flooded, creating a man-made island, giving birth to the slogan, an island like no other. Although the park doesn't currently hold any world records, there are some firsts and former records that made the park stand out, particularly amongst European theme parks. The Swarm was the UK's first winged coaster, and was the world's first winged coaster, to feature an inverted wing over drop. Saw the Ride was branded as the world's first horror movie themed roller coaster. Stealth is the fastest roller coaster in the UK and is also the second tallest roller coaster in the UK. Colossus was the former world record holder for most inversions on a roller coaster at the time of opening. Tidal Wave was the tallest water ride in Europe at the time of opening. In 2015, the Thorpe Park Resort teased a brand new attraction, codenamed WC16, which had been planned for many years. The attraction was originally supposed to open on May 6, 2016, however it was announced that the ride was not ready and the opening was delayed until June 18th, when previews took place and officially opened to the public on July 18th, 2016. Reviews on opening were mixed, with the VR headsets often being out of sync and sometimes not working at all. This was the main feature of the ride, so issues with the headsets would completely spoil the ride experience. In its second year of operation, the ride was rebranded as Darren Brown's Ghost Train Rise of the Demon, featuring graphical improvements and new headsets which allowed riders to hear the story and sound effects better. The resort also added a scare maze section, replacing the live action section of the ride. Although this did not add much to the experience since it was not scary and didn't feature any effects. On February 1st, 2023, it was announced that Darren Brown's Ghost Train would no longer be and that the attraction would return in the following season, named simply Ghost Train, which will see the removal of the VR features of the ride, and will feature live scare actors and multi-sensory effects in the aim to recreate a truly terrifying attraction. As quoted from the Thought Park website, the next generation of Ghost Train will take you on a harrowing ride into the realms beneath Thought Park Resort to where the supernatural believers call home. In the early 1990s, Thought Park received the royal seal of approval when Princess Diana and the young princes William and Harry visited the park three years in a row. They visited during the Easter holidays in 1991 1992 and 1993. On their visits to the park, Diana insisted that they would queue for all their rides and should be treated like everybody else. Over the three trips to Thorpe Park, they rode most of the rides together, 
Apparently, the one ride that Diana refused to try was the flying fish. The royal visits drew lots of press attention, with a number of photographs featuring in the British and foreign press for days after the visits. One of these photos, showing the princes and Princess Diana on log asleep, became one of the most famous images of Diana relaxing with her sons. On their third visit in 1993, a film crew were invited to follow the royals around the park, filming them enjoying the rides. They were joined around the park and on the rides by Colin Dawson, who was Thorpe Park's general manager at the time. Rides they were filmed on included Logger's Leap, The Teacup Ride, Thunder River, Depth Charge, and the Hudson River Rafters. After the death of Princess Diana in 1997, Thorpe Park added a memorial to her, near a flagpole in the viewing area of Logger's Leap. It is a stone memorial with a metal plaque that bears the following dedication. Diana, Princess of Wales, dedicated in fond memory by the Thorpe Park team, September 1997. In 2014, Thought Park premiered a new section of the park in collaboration with the video game Angry Birds, located between Amity Cove and Calypso Key. The area became known as Angry Birds Land, featuring Angry Birds 4D Experience, a 10-minute action-packed film with full special effects to look out for, a classic dodgem style ride named King Pig's Wild Hog Dodgems, and a 115-foot drop tower, known as Detonator Bombs Away. If you have ever watched YouTube videos about Thorpe Park, you are probably familiar with this guy. Jack Silkston is a YouTuber who focuses most of his content around Thorpe Park, with construction update videos vlogs from the park as well as other parks around the world. His connections with the resort means that he always has the latest updates and has access behind the scenes, showing that some things that the general public would never normally be able to see. In November 2021, the Thought Park Resort announced they would be holding a public consultation regarding plans for a brand new roller coaster to be held on December 10th, 2021. Plans were shown and it was revealed that the new roller coaster would be located in the Old Town section of the park and it was planned to become the tallest roller coaster in the UK with a maximum height of 72 metres or 236 feet, beating the big one at Blackpool Pleasure Beach by just one foot. The project was revealed to be named Project Exodus. Exodus, 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 Exodus. On March 14th, 2022, Thought Park submitted their plans for the roller coaster, and shortly after this, construction walls appeared around Old Town. Although the plans received some negative comments, and there were some concerns about the flood plans, Thought Park were finally given full approval for Project Exodus on November 1st, 2022. More recently, it has been confirmed that the roller coaster will be a Mac hyper coaster, and parts have already begun arriving on site. This is a very exciting development since it will be the first roller coaster to be built at Thorpe Park for over 10 years. The Rocky Express was a small train-themed circular spin ride, which opened in 1989. Riders sat in an open-top train carriage, which span around in a circle. The ride picked up a bit of speed, and the experience could be surprisingly intense. The Rocky Express was a fun family ride, which acted as another good filler for those not yet ready to experience some of Thorpe's larger flat rides. Sadly, the ride closed towards the end of 2021 to make way for the redevelopment of the Old Town area and the construction of Project Exodus.
Canada Creek Railway opened in Canada Creek in 1989 and served as a link to Thorpe Farm. On the way back, the ride would loop around Canada Creek, mainly circling around Loggersleep. When Thorpe Farm closed, the track was rerouted to just be a loop around Canada Creek, and guests would take part in a bear hunt and look out for bear statues dotted around the circuit. The ride was closed in 2008 due to the construction of Saw the Ride and rerouted to accommodate the ride so it could open again in 2009. The ride closed at the end of the 2011 season due to declining popularity and much of the track remained in place and the trains in storage. To make way for the Project Exodus construction, the Canada Creek Station building has recently been demolished. The Thorpe Park Rangers were the park's mascots from 1989 to 2005, although they were most popular during the 1990s. The mascots used to each have their own rides in Rangers Country, now called the Jungle. Since installation, the rides have been removed, and the only one left now is Mr. Monkey's Banana Boat Ride. As well as the rides, there used to be a show space previously taken up by I'm a Celebrity and Fright Night's mazes like The Asylum and others. The mascots included Chief Ranger. He was the leader of the pack. He was brave, courageous, always looking out for his fellow rangers and fans. The mischievous Mr. Monkey would sometimes call him officious, and he was always giving him a run for his money. His ranger country ride was Chief Ranger's carousel. Baby Bear, Chief Ranger's son. He was not officially a Thorpe Park Ranger, but he wanted to be one when he grew up. He was a representative of some of Thorpe Park's smallest visitors at the time, as he was not big enough to ride some of the rides yet, but he knew he would be soon. Mr. Monkey. Mr. Monkey was the mischievous one of the group. He was always playing tricks and practical jokes on the other rangers, particularly on Chief Ranger. And of course, his ranger country ride was Mr. Monkey's banana ride. Mr. Elephant. In his own words, he was an elephant as fat as fat can be. He was often quite sleepy and partial to an afternoon snooze. His ranger country attraction was Mr. Elephant's picnic area. Mr. Giraffe. Being the tallest of the rangers, Mr. Giraffe was very clumsy and was always getting his head stuck up chimneys or bashing his head on things. His ranger country attraction was Mr. Giraffe's fungal stall. Mr. Rabbit was Thought Park's original mascot in the 1980s who joined the rangers when they arrived at the park. He was the most hyperactive member of the group, who was always rushing around at speed. Some would even say he can be a bit impatient. His ranger country ride was Mr. Rabbit's tropical travels. Miss Hippo joined the rangers in the mid-1990s as one of the two new female rangers, and her ranger country ride was Miss Hippo's fungal safari. Miss Frog was the other new female ranger who joined the group with Miss Hippo in the mid-1990s. Being one of the quieter rangers, not much was known about her, and she did not have her own attraction. And finally there was Harley, who some people may know as Cool Cat. He was one of the ranger's friends who arrived at the park around 1995. Towards the end of the 90s, he became the main character in the animated Thorpe Park television adverts. As with many Intamin launch coasters, stealth experiences occasional rollbacks, which occur when a train is unable to complete the course, specifically failing to make it over the top hat element as a result of energy loss. Occurrences are rare, and there is a braking system in place on the launch side of the track to safely bring the roller coaster back to a complete stop. Rollbacks, however, are safe, 
and all staff and engineers are trained to safely evacuate guests off the train. Many enthusiasts see experiencing a rollback as an achievement. On May 24, 1979, Thorpe Park was officially opened to the public by Lord Louis Mountbatten. This was his final public appearance before his assassination. From 2013 until 2016, Thorpe Park did something rather different to the swarm. The back two rows of the roller coaster trains were turned to face backwards creating a very unique ride experience. The phrase, brave it backwards, was applied to the ride and the park's branding for the year. The park announced this on their social media during the park's closed season, leaving fans of Thought Park wondering what would happen to the ride, with anticipation building. Brave it backwards had its own dedicated queue line However, due to the throughput being limited to the back two rows, the experience sometimes had longer queues than riding the roller coaster normally. At the start of the 2017 season, the Brave It Backwards gimmick was removed and the ride was returned to facing forwards only. Wet 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 was a three lane water slide this attraction was rarely open, along with the rest of the Amity Beach section of the park. Sadly, during the 2020-21 close season, the attraction was removed after 32 years of operation. This was said to be due to the park's target audience changing and less families coming to the park. During the planning and construction of Stealth, Many other names were considered for the roller coaster. During construction, it was referred to as Project Stealth, but other names for the attraction included Adrenaline and Fearless, as well as Humdinger and The Edge. It is said that the resort printed a signpost and had already started making merchandise with The Edge branding. However, it was rumored that a last minute change took place due to Pizza Hut UK trademarking the name for a new pizza they were advertising. It is unclear whether or not this rumour is true, however Stealth was ultimately chosen, since it was already known under this name to many. Eclipse was a ferris wheel that was added to the Lost City area of the park in 2003. It was a very short-lived attraction and was removed during the 2004 closed season due to negative guest feedback. It was replaced by Rush, a screaming swing, in 2005. Eclipse was relocated to Chessington World of Adventures, where it operated under the name Peking Heights until 2017. Space Station Zero was the first roller coaster at Thorpe Park and opened in 1984. It was an indoor coaster with spaceship style theming. After boarding, the train travelled around a bend through a tunnel of flashing lights. The ride did two laps of the track, first in the dark and the second lit by glitter balls to appear as stars. Following the success of Saw the Ride, Thought Park launched Saw Alive for the 2010 season as a year-round live attraction scam maze featuring iconic moments from the Saw movies. Guests came face to face with Billy the Puppet under the control of the sadistic Jigsaw and experienced six terrifying scenes including the famous bathroom, freezer and shotgun traps. The maze was located on board the Thorpe Bell, a steamboat which formerly hosted the park's education centre. Fans of the Saw movies 
will easily recognise the well-themed scenes contained within, and it was easy to feel unnerved by the genuinely scary actors located throughout. There was a minor negative in its overall concept. The genuine fear within the Saw movies is of people caught in Jigsaw's traps, but in Saw Alive, guests only get to experience these torture devices as passive observers. Although originally conceived as a year-round attraction, Saw Alive was closed at the beginning of the 2012 season, following the successful opening of The Swarm. From then, the maze could be experienced seasonally, during the annual Fright Nights Halloween event, up until 2018, when it closed permanently. This was due to the boat which hosted the scare maze sinking. On July 21, 2000, a major fire broke out at Thorpe Park. The fire started at 3pm on Mr. Rabbit's Tropical Travels ride and spread to other nearby buildings and attractions. Over 100 firefighters were called to the site, and two aerial ladder platforms, as well as other appliances, were used to fight the fire. There were no reported injuries, and all guests were evacuated as planned, according to the management. However, unfortunately, by the time the fire was brought under control, the buildings were damaged beyond repair, and had to be demolished, leading to the loss of both the Wicked Witch's Haunt and Mr. Rabbit's Tropical Travels Ride. The cause of the fire was unknown at the time, However, several sources blame the fire starting due to a guest throwing or stumping out a cigarette inside the ride building. Following the incident, Thought Park installed an Enterprise ride to make up for the loss of the two attractions. This was the first thrill ride at the park, and was made permanent in 2001, renamed to Zodiac. Many fans see the installation of the new rides following the fire, as the start of Thought Park's journey to becoming the thrill park it is today. The Rumba Rapids are one of the oldest attractions at Thought Park, opening originally under the name Thunder River in 1987. In 2002, the ride was sponsored by Ribena, along with the Berry Bish Bash attraction at Alton Towers, and Berry Bouncers at Chessington Worlds of Adventures. Using the money from this sponsorship, the then Thunder River was refurbished and rethemed, becoming the Ribena Rumba Rapids. Although the ride's track and layout remained unchanged, the whole area received a facelift and a paint job. The ride area attracted your eyes with a lot of bright and bold colours, including purple and green, one big change made to the ride was the boats. These now came in a variety of bright colours, red, purple and green, and set up to eight people, no longer having safety handrails in the centre. Another big change to the ride was the addition of new ride elements and lots of Ribena Berry inspired theming. Some of these new ride elements included sprinklers and water jets around the track, and a shower section at the end of the ride. Examples of some of the Ribena theming included a new, brightly lit, berry themed section inside the tunnel, opposite the waterfall. They also added a few new elements to the ride entrance building, including a Ribena vending machine and a purple lizard with yellow spots that squirted water at people entering the ride. The sponsorship with Ribena ended in 2007 when the ride became known as simply Rumba Rapids. In the 1930s, the Thorpe Park estate was purchased by RMC. No, not that one. Ready Mix Concrete Limited, a quarrying and concrete products company. The site was demolished and transformed into a gravel pit then expanded and partially flooded. In 1979, the company transformed the site, which was then a quarry, into a leisure park known as Thorpe Park. RMC operated Thorpe Park until 1998, 
when it was purchased by the Tussauds Group. In 2010, Thorpe Park submitted plans for a new roller coaster, revealing very little besides its layout, track length, and maximum height. In April of the following year, the resort revealed an advertising campaign, with hundreds of posters around the park stating that the end is coming, uncover the truth. Alongside this, a website launched, lc12.net, which was the codename for the new coaster meaning Long Count 12, since the end of the world was 2012 according to the Mayan calendar. The website revealed much of the planned theming for the coaster and a countdown for August 1st, 2011, the date which Thought Park revealed the name of the new coaster as The Swarm. Tidal Wave is a giant shoot the shoots water ride which opened in 2000. The ride was sponsored by Original Source from 2006 to 2009, and later by Dr Pepper from 2010 to 2018. Since 2019, the ride has been sponsored by Oasis. Thorpe Farm was a traditional working farm featuring familiar British farm animals, farming vehicles and machinery. Over the years the farm was active, you could access it via the water buses from Model World or the Canada Creek Railway. At least until the closure of Treasure Island Railway in 1993, you could also walk to the farm on a path that ran alongside the track of Canada Creek Railway. As well as sheep, cows, pigs and goats, the farm was home to many animals including chickens, turkeys, ducks, shire horses, donkeys, Shetland ponies, rabbits, guinea pigs, llamas, and a duckling that was rescued by staff from the tidal wave track. The farm was designed to be a recreation of a 1930s working farm. When they were developing the area, they had to carefully restore many of the farm buildings as they date back to the 17th century. These buildings include Manor House Farmhouse, Manor House Barn and the Shire Barn, all of which are Grade 2 listed buildings. Other attractions at Thorpe Farm included a craft centre, a farm gift shop, a small children's playground, an ice cream shop and a restaurant called Potbellies, which was renamed as the Farm Restaurant in 2006. In 2007, Thorpe Park posted notices around the park informing guests that Thorpe Farm would not be reopening, following its closure during the summer of the 2006 season. This is what the notices said about the closure. Thorpe Park has made the decision not to reopen its farm attraction in 2007, which has now been closed since summer 2006. The number of guests choosing to spend time at the farm has declined steadily due to the range of new and improved attractions available for guests of all ages, and this factor has been instrumental in us reaching this decision. Please rest assured that all animals have been rehomed. At present, there are no firm plans for the main farm area, but we hope to have our landscape team occupy the grounds in the near future for horticultural purposes. Slammer was a giant sky swap ride manufactured by SNS Power and was one of only two of its kind in the world, the other being located at Six Flags Astro World. Slammer provided a unique ride experience. Riders would sit on one of Slammer's two swats which featured four rows of six seats mounted at each end of the ride's main arm. Once the ride began, the arm would be lifted 65 feet up Slammer's vertical tower, and after being locked into place, around its central pivot point, would begin rotating. This would cause riders at one end of the ride to dive towards the ground as the others were swung towards the sky. 
Unfortunately, Slammer experienced many issues from its delayed opening to the excessive downtime it faced throughout its lifetime. The arm often got stuck at the top of the tower, and in its most serious incident, the ride's self-writing mechanism failed, and riders were left stranded at a very uncomfortable angle before they could be rescued. SMS officially discontinued manufacturing the SkySwap model in 2010. Slamo continued to suffer from excessive downtime, with it completely removed from the park map in 2013. It reopened briefly in 2015, but Thorpe Park announced its official permanent closure in 2017. In 2006, Thorpe Park submitted outline plans for a 250-room hotel on the old Semex site, something that had been planned for many years, after which there was little or no activity regarding this. In 2013, Thorpe Park opened a temporary accommodation known as the Crash Pad, which was made of stackable shipping containers. Following its success, Thought Park decided to take full ownership of this hotel and reopening it as the Thorpe Shark Cabins in 2014. In May of the same year, the plans for the Waterside Hotel were revisited and a full planning application was submitted to the local council. The hotel was planned to be built in two phases. The first would include 150 rooms, a bar, restaurant, cafe, and a section of a health club. The second phase was to include a further 100 rooms and an extension to the health club. The hotel also planned to include a small play area for children, as well as a jetty link to the park. Following a small exhibition to nearby residents, largely positive feedback was received including that it fit in with the theme and style aimed for a calming waterside hotel. There were, however, some concerns about transport issues, but Thorpe Park assured that the hotel and transport links to it will have little to no effect on the surrounding area. A timescale was also included, showing that work was planned to start on the hotel in summer 2016 and the hotel itself would open in spring 2018. There has, however, been no further developments on this project, and with the planning application expiring in 2024, it looks like the Waterside Hotel is not to be. Park Radio played music, adverts and jingles for rides and attractions at the park. Some of these pre-recorded adverts and jingles featured the park's mascots, the Thought Park Rangers. The presenters would also make announcements about show times for that day and information about things going on around the park. Thought Park Radio was broadcast to the queue lines and other public areas around the park. However, some of the top rides at the time, for example, Depth Charge and Logged Sleep, would promote themselves using pre-recorded output that was also played out of the Thought Park Radio studio. The station used to play a wide and varied mix of classic hits and more recent chart releases. The music would start before the park opened, playing to staff as they prepared for all the guests right through to closing time. From around 4pm, presenters were encouraged to slow down the pace of the music to help encourage guests to leave the park. Thought Park Radio was effectively closed down by the Performing Rights Society before the 1997 season. 
Unfortunately, they had now decided that the station was playing more than just background music, and it was more like a proper radio station. The new music licensing fees imposed were too high at the time for the park to keep the station on air. Ali Law is a YouTuber with videos featuring parkour with him climbing on a range of buildings and cranes, as well as doing overnight challenges where he and a group of friends attempt to stay in various commercial premises after closing hours. In August 2017, he uploaded a video entitled Climbing Stealth at Thorpe Park, where him and his friends went into Thorpe Park during its closed hours and climbed to the top of Stealth, a roller coaster with a height of 62 meters, with no harnesses or safety equipment. On a separate video, he uploaded the climb down, during which Ali was spotted by the park security, after which he was escorted from the park. He revealed a letter which he had received from Mellon Entertainment, banning him from Mellon Parks in the UK and across Europe. On September 15, 2018, a seat's rear fiberglass cover fell off mid-ride on the Vortex ride. Just missing riders. The seat was unoccupied, labelled do not use, at the time of the incident. Fortunately, nobody was injured. Scream If You Know The Answer was a British game show presented by Duncan James and narrated by Colin Murray, originally airing on May 2nd, 2010. The games consisted of general knowledge quizzes, but they were played on rides at Thorpe Park. Contestants consisted of two teams of two, one member of each team being a celebrity. Some well-known celebrities who appeared on the show were Phil Tufnell, Katie Price, Matt Willis and John Burrowman. On May 13th, 2012, a new series was released with a different name, which was Scream Extreme, and it was set in Six Flags Magic Mountain in California. As with all of the major attractions at Thorpe Park, during construction, Saw the Ride had a code name which was Project Dylan. Unlike other project names, however, Project Dylan did not have a significant meaning, other than Dylan being the name of the marketing director's cat. In April 2018, a YouTube account under the name Project Zero released a video called Zero Question Mark, which began with the statement you have waited two years for an answer, and at around the same time, the Thorpe Park Resort posted several tweets in which the letter O was replaced by a zero. Thorpe Park fans immediately began to speculate about this, and very quickly caught on to the link between the YouTube channel and the resort's Twitter account. Some theories of what the resort might have been teasing included a new roller coaster, a retheme of a current coaster, or a brand new scare attraction at the park. The channel later released another video with clips of old footage about neurosurgery, clowns, an asylum, and various binary codes, which were clues. Due to the overwhelming attention that this had gained within the theme park community, the Figaro Bros, the people behind Project Zero, released a statement, which was revealed in Jack Silkston's video. They stated that Project Zero is an official marketing campaign for something new and exciting created by the Figaro Bros, who worked extensively on reimagining some of the much-loved mazes at Thorpe Park. We are disappointed that we have had to break the silence, as it wasn't our intention to interfere with people's search for the answer. We do hope that those competing to find the answer 
can now look past Thorpe Park and onto something new. So this was all in fact a mere coincidence. However, some people believe that the Figaro Bros may have been working on a project alongside Thorpe Park, but for some reason the park decided not to pursue the project. Due to the links in the videos between various attractions at Thorpe Park, there is no confirmation if this is true or not. This is something that I have heard about but I'm unable to confirm if it is real or not. However, according to a Reddit user, Jetspace Fella, there is a ketchup packet somewhere around the Heartline section of Saw the Ride. He says that the indoor section has the water spraying in the Heartline roll as blood. This, plus the amount of fake blood throughout the experience, led some people to think that it would be funny to elude an immersion breaking joke of sorts. The ketchup packet implies that all of the signs of fake dried blood in the experience is actually ketchup. When you think of Thought Park, you automatically think of the Thought Park Resort in Surrey. However, a small mishap with Google Maps could take you 200 miles away from the resort, since there is a Haven Resort with the same name located in Cleethorpes, Lincolnshire. In December 2022, Thought Park shared on their TikTok a video of Colossus missing some track. They didn't share any further details about this, however, in Jack Silkstone's video, he revealed that some of the track was removed, which appears to be part of a retrack project, which they have been keeping secret. The work many people are suspecting will be taking place during the closed season, much like the big one at Blackpool Pleasure Beach, which will ensure that the ride can still operate during the open season, and will rather focus on replacing parts of the track in sections. Recently, just ahead of the park's reopening, a Reddit user posted these photos of new track arriving on site and being installed. The coaster is now over 20 years old, and with many visitors complaining of the uncomfortable and rough experience of riding Colossus, this could see the coaster improve and secure a further 20 years of operation of the park. On September 22, 2001, two teenagers sustained minor injuries when one support on a gondola broke on Zodiac, a Hus Enterprise flat ride. The gondola repeatedly hit the decking at the bottom of the ride, whilst the operator attempted to stop the ride. The incident was taken to court, where the judge criticised the length of time it took to shut down the ride after a normal noise had been noticed. Tussauds Group was fined £65,000 and ordered to pay an additional £35,000 in costs for failing to ensure the safety of persons not in its employment. On August 31st, 2000, an 11-year-old boy broke both of his legs and was left with slurred speech after suffering a brain injury, specifically a left vertebral artery dissection on X No Way Out. The incident occurred on one of the stationary block breaks. The cause was not believed to be a ride fault, but allegedly the boy managed to stand up whilst on the ride and was ejected from the train, sustaining the relevant injuries. In Thorpe Park's 2010 to 2016 medium term development plan, the resort highlighted plans for a new roller coaster 
alongside a hotel, which was mentioned earlier in this video. No plans were ever submitted for this roller coaster, and it is believed that this was due to the park's latest roller coaster, The Swarm, not being as successful as expected. Instead, the resort opted to invest in a dark ride that was Darren Brown's Ghost Train. This means that by the time Project Exodus opens to the public, it will have been 12 years since the last roller coaster opened at the Thorpe Park Resort. In 1987, the opening year of Thunder River, now known as the Rumba Rapids, a seven-year-old boy lost his ear after falling from a boat on the ride. In 1995, the old Cinema 180 building was used to house what the park map called Seasonal Attractions. One of these was an exhibition showcasing the props and costumes from the latest Batman movie, Batman Forever. Amongst the items in the collection were one of the full-size Batmobiles from the movie, and many costumes including the Batsuit worn by Val Kilmer. Inside the domed building, U2's soundtrack to the movie played on a continuous loop. As well as advertising the new movie, they were also showing off a new gaming technology. It was a virtual reality slash 3D game system that involved the player having to wear a big visor on their head whilst controlling the game using a traditional D-pad style controller. In April 2014, a 14-year-old girl from Colchester was injured by a safety bar on Logger Sleep. In a subsequent claim against the park's insurers, she was awarded £20,000 for nerve damage, a swollen knee joint, long-term hypersensitivity and soft tissue damage. The claim stated that the ride attendants put too many guests into the ride vehicle, which forced the victim's legs into the safety bar. On the 14th to 17th of April 2006, Thought Park hosted an X Factor inspired talent contest held in the Dome, where guests got to perform on stage in front of the celebrity judges for the chance to win a celebrity VIP prize. On the judge panel for this event were Coronation Street's Richard Fleischman and S Club 7's Joe O'Meara. This event returned once again the following year. On December 22nd, 2018, a YouTube channel under the name Glenn uploaded a video named Local Sleep Last Walkthrough, Thought Park Abandoned Rides Archive, Canada Creek Railway Platform 15. In the video, a man shows the abandoned Canada Creek Railway trains and walks along the Logger Sleep track, which looks derelict and is filled with leaves. He also shows the abandoned control cabin of the ride. Surprisingly, the man was not caught by the park security, despite not being very discreet. On Monday the 25th of May 1998, Thorpe Park remained open for 24 hours straight a first for a UK park. The park was open from 5am Monday to 5am Tuesday, and guests could spend the whole 24 hours at the park, all for the normal one-day entry price of £16.50 pence per adult. There were also special Knight Rider tickets available, costing £8 for guests entering the park after 8pm. Thought Park laid on a free breakfast for guests that were in the park before 7am. They also handed guests that were still in the park after midnight a free return ticket that could be used during the summer. Alan Randall, head of marketing, said that the park would only need 1,000 extra guests during the 24-hour period to pay for the extra cost of keeping the park open. During the 1980s, 
Thorpe Park was used as a filming location for various sketches from the Benny Hill Show. The sketches utilised the rides and fairways. It first appeared on March 16, 1983, when the saucy boy tried escaping his pursuers, and again on March 31, 1986, when Rembrandt is pursued. Part of the grounds appear in the Crook Report sketch on February 8, 1989. Benny Hill brings the Hill's Little Angels here for fishing on May 1, 1989, and encounters escaping convicts trying to escape through the park. In summer 2010, the Embarrassing Bodies Clinic visited Thorpe Park to film an episode which would be shown in 2011. In this episode, Dr. Pixie meets a woman with a pair of testicle-like cysts on her head. Dr. Christian deals with a young woman with incontinence, and Dr. Dawn helps a man who just can't hold on to his leaking bowels. On July 18, 2020, a 26-year-old man suffered severe stab wounds to his stomach following an altercation on a bridge near the park entrance, which also caused the park to be briefly put in lockdown. Craig Harricker, 26, was initially charged with causing grievous bodily harm with intent, but later these charges were dropped. He was jailed for seven months after pleading guilty to a fray. The victim was discharged from hospital shortly after the incident. On August 9th, 2007, Thorpe Park attempted a world record for the largest queue line karaoke. Kylie Minogue's locomotion was played out to the queue lines for 13 of the biggest rides at the park as 6,321 guests sang along. Following the success of the crash pad accommodation in 2013, Thor Park decided that they would like to proceed with the Waterfront Hotel, which had been planned for many years. They released three different concepts for the planned hotel area. The first concept was Boardwalk, which included a Helter Skelter and a Chill Out Zone. Another concept was named Stealth Ship, where guests could chill out in the lower deck in the Steam Bar, which would have its own fire pit. It was also planned that steam would shoot out from the funnel once every hour. The third and final concept was the Shark, where guests would enter through the mouth of a giant metal shark structure that appeared to be emerging from the lake. This was the concept that the resort ultimately decided to proceed with, naming the accommodation Thorpe Shark Cabins. In 2005, Thorpe Park introduced a new scare maze to the Fright Nights lineup. This maze was themed to a mental asylum with actors named Patience which aimed to simulate an extreme horror movie experience. The maze became a regular addition to the Fright Nights lineup, that was until its eighth year of operation, where controversy began regarding the scare attraction. In 2013, a mental health nursing student started a petition for Thorpe Park to close the maze, stating that Asylum, Thorpe Park's Halloween maze, is stigmatising to mental illness. This controversy was widely covered by media. The CEO of the charity Rethink Mental Illness said that, well of course there's nothing wrong with a bit of Halloween fun. Explicit references to patients crosses a line and reinforces damaging stereotypes about mental illness. He says it really matters because the promotion of the scary mental patient stereotype reinforces stigma and means people with mental health problems are afraid to be open about it. He highlights that this could mean that people who suffer from mental illness may be less likely to seek support. A Thought Park spokeswoman responded to this, saying that, We have listened to the feedback 
and respect the opinions of everyone who has been in touch. However, these comments are not universally representative either of many of our guests who have given us very positive feedback or of others working within the mental health sector. She highlighted that it is not intended to be in any way offensive or to be a realistic portrayal of mental health or indeed any other institution. The petition to close the scare maze attracted over 6,000 signatures and the following year, Asylum was removed from the Fright Nights lineup. Thorpe Park is a self-proclaimed most thrilling theme park in the UK. This claim is made in regards to their rides and attractions, however, not necessarily because of the creepy occurrences. During the construction of Storm Surge, a spinning rapids water ride in 2011, workers reported some eerie experiences, including sudden drops in temperature, and even sightings of what appeared to be a ghostly headless monk. These strange occurrences resulted in a team of paranormal investigators being called to the resort. During their investigation, it was found that the construction of the ride may have caused disturbance to an ancient burial ground or settlement, which was later confirmed by a forensic geophysicist. The area where construction was taking place was known as Monk's Walk, a footpath which once linked Chertsey Abbey to Thorpe Church, dating back to 666 AD. Paranormal expert Jim Arnold, who carried out tests at the site, said, Results were picked up immediately, with orbs, ghostly images and photography, and Ouija reaction results being strongest around the site where they were proposing to build Storm Surge. The results were so strong, we felt the only explanation could be that an ancient burial ground or settlement was being disturbed, prompting the extra paranormal activity. After the findings of the investigation, it was decided that Storm Surge would not be built in this area and construction was relocated to the Amity area of the park. However, as much as I would like to believe this, it is likely that this was all a publicity stunt to promote the new ride. So that was the Thought Park Iceberg. What theme park would you like to see me create an iceberg for next? Let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to leave a like and subscribe to my channel. This really helps me to reach more people and would be greatly appreciated. I would also like to take this opportunity to thank everyone for the positive comments on my last iceberg video and for all of you that subscribed following that video. I appreciate you so much. Thank you for watching.